I admit it, I was wrong. This is the best desktop diode laser you can buy. My name's Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. So recently, about three months ago, I did a video on the Artur Laser Master 2. I really liked that machine, I used it a ton, and I thought at that time it was the best desktop diode laser you could buy. I tell you what, the Artur Laser Master 2 Pro came out, and I stand corrected. This is the best desktop diode laser you can buy, and as we walk through the specs today, I'm gonna tell you why. Let's go. I just want to interject quick and tell you this video has been brought to you by Thangs. Thangs is quickly becoming the biggest 3D model community out there. With over 3 million models on their site, you can find almost anything. And if you don't have it, you can put it on Thangs anytime you want. There's nothing special required. There's no ads. And I tell you what, Thangs is the place to get your models. Click the link in the description below to get the mini gym by Wexter, and that'll take you straight to Thangs. Thanks, thanks for sponsoring this video. The first thing I want to talk about is the board. Now it sits in the front left of the machine behind this panel right here, and it's a brand new board for the Laser Master 2 Pro. They say that it's a 32-bit board, and it can increase the speeds from 4,000 millimeters a minute to 10,000 millimeters a minute with the brand new board. It has a new algorithm that is motion optimized, so it's supposed to be a lot faster, and it allows many more safety features built in on this machine because of the board. The board is also 24 volt and the power goes right here. As you can see, there is a USB here and a cable right here for the standalone controller if you were to have one. Now, I don't have one of those, but they're pretty cool. When they start being more prominent, I'm gonna get one and I'll do a video on that later. Talking about safety features, the first one you can see right away is this emergency stop button. You push it down if you need to. It'll cut the power to the laser and it won't keep firing. So that's a good way to go with that emergency stop button. Remember to release it, you just turn it and let it pop back up. You wanna make sure it's up before you try to do any burns or it will not work. On the back, it has a fire detection. So if it sees flame, it can shut the machine down. So it'll stop. The other cool thing is if you're burning and maybe you tilt the machine or the machine moves at all like this, uh, it will detect that and shut the laser down as well. So that's another great safety feature. The other cool thing is uh, maybe your laser is burning like this and it stops and it stops for too long um, and it's in a stationary position. It'll actually cut the laser diode as well. That way it doesn't just keep burning down. So if this were to somehow get stuck, it'll actually cut out the laser and that's awesome. This right here is the sound and light alarm. So if it does detect a flame, or anything like that, it'll buzz this alarm here, a light will come on, it'll make a noise. Um, now I haven't tested that, uh, I should probably just throw a flame of some sort behind it and see what happens, but they say that's what happens, it'll come on, it'll make a noise and that'll tell you that uh, there's a flame detected or something's wrong with the laser as well. Uh, the other cool thing is if somehow your USB here gets pulled out or stops from your computer, it'll actually stop the laser as well, so it won't keep going, it won't freeze the laser where it is like some lasers do, uh, so that's really good. It detects if that USB gets pulled out. That only works if you're not using the offline controller here too. The other cool thing is this laser safety shield right here. So this is down so you don't get exposed to most of the beam. Now, a lot of times your material will actually sit way up in here, so it'll be pretty close to the material and it's a lot less chance of you walking in the room and accidentally seeing this if you don't have it in an enclosure. Now, I always burn with mine in an enclosure, but if you don't or you don't have one yet, uh, at least you have this protecting you. Now, that does loosen and flips up like that if you needed to, and that will help you with the focal distance, but if you need to lift that up, put your material under there and everything, then slide this back down and, and lock it in. Make sure it's tight so it doesn't just flip up. There you go, and you're good to go. So this safety glass is a pretty awesome thing to have around the edge of the laser. That was a little about safety, now let's talk functionality. This right here came with mine. Now I believe this is an add-on, I'm not sure if it comes with all of them or not, but I love the Z adjust here. So because this is a fixed focus laser, you never have to turn the focusing down here. You do have to adjust it up and down to get it to work correctly. Now, the one that comes with it standard, I believe you slide up and down by loosening a, uh, a screw or a bolt, but the one that came with mine, I added on, 
and you just twist the knob here and it'll go up and down to the focal length that you need. So let's talk about focusing while we're talking about this shield. The first thing I would do to focus is lift up my shield and then I would lock it in place just a little bit so it doesn't fall. Next, I would grab the included bar right here. Now this is for focusing. And I would set it right on top of the material that I wanna burn. In this case, we're gonna use this cork coaster. Then I would turn my adjustment so it goes down and just touches just like that. So you want it just to touch the housing just like that. Then you, you can slide this out, you can flip your housing down and then lock it in position from both sides. Now you're ready to go. That's at the optimal distance here for the laser to burn this coaster. And that took all of maybe 10 seconds to do. It's really fast to focus these now. And that's a really cool thing for these lasers because it used to be a pain in the butt to dial that in and get it all focused. The next thing I really like about this is it actually has physical end stops. Now there's one here uh, for the Y and there's one here for your X. And I tell you what, uh, these things really help out. I've been testing some without end stops and I tell you what, I am spoiled because this one does have the end stops, just like the Laser Master 2 did. One of my favorite things that this thing came with is probably this cable train here. I absolutely love this. All the cables get hidden in here and it really looks nice. Uh, you know, it, it's free flowing, it moves back and forth as needed. And I tell you what, I really, really like that feature. I'm glad they did this. Uh, they did not do one up here for your X, but for the Y they did it and it looks great. There's still a little bit of room in there if you wanted to run an airline or anything like that. But I tell you, I really love this cable chain. Something else they did is they got rid of a lot of the weight here on the X cables. And I tell you, uh, this is really light. It hasn't gotten in the way of my stuff yet, uh, but I, you could easily put something a little bit thicker in here to help it stay up if you really wanted to, or even print another cable chain if that's uh, what you want to do. But I haven't had any issues. It's super light, which keeps the head of your laser very light as well. Something else I really like is that it has the measurements across your X and Y axes. So you can see them there. And if I come over here, you can actually see them. It goes all the way down the back and it actually has them on the back as well. That's a really cool thing if you're trying to get exact coordinates or measurements, but I tell you what, I usually burn the grid on the waste board anyway, and that really helps me out. But it is cool to have them, and in my case, it's actually in inches. You can see it right down there in inches. Another great thing they did was add the second motor here on your uh, X axis. This drives the X gantry on the Y axis back and forth like this. Now, the reason why this is awesome is because it helps take some of the weight off the motor on the left side. So it does connect with a bar here to keep everything in line. There is a belt on both sides as well, but this right here will help speed up this laser just like they say it's gonna. And I tell you, this thing can move much faster when it's two motors instead of just one trying to pull everything back and forth. I really like that feature. Another great reason why this is the pro. Another cool feature is this holder right here. This holds the bar that helps you focus the laser here. So you pull this out and it just sets in there. So it's not just rolling around loose. You don't lose it. You always can keep it right in the front. Something else I want to talk about is how structurally sound this is. You can see that they actually include inside corner bracing. So you put that in when you're building it along with being bolted together from the outside as well. So this thing is very sturdy. It holds up to the speeds you put it to, and I really like the frame of this machine. All right, real quick, I wanna show you some things that I've been playing with on this laser. This right here is a lion I found on uh, Google, and I really like this picture. So I threw it on some colored scratch paper. As you can see, the rainbow scratch paper came out really, really nice. I did not clear coat these, so I just wanted to show you exactly how they came off of the laser. Um, you can see it came out really good. The detail is absolutely phenomenal in these. And uh, I think that came out very good. Now, while I was dialing it in, I was playing with uh, different speeds and doing tests like you should. And I did one of our signs here. It says, even Jedi's take naps and uh, just kind of a fun thing there. But I was trying to dial it in with this one, just seeing uh, where my settings should be before I did that lion. When I got that done, I started looking into this right here. Now this is gold scratch paper and it's not terrible. I could done better. So I'm gonna keep working on the settings on this one. Uh, you can see this one really shiny right there. So I should be able to get this much 
much more shiny. Then I went on to tiles and I did one of my magic numbers tiles. I'll link that above. And it came out really nice. As you can see, uh, 15, in my opinion, was the best. Uh, I, I really liked 15. I believe this could go much faster than 1200 millimeters a minute, so I'm gonna adjust one and uh, try to get a new file out there for this because why not see how fast this thing can go and produce nice prints if we can, right? So once I did that, I moved on to this one right here. Now this was a reverse tile. I put black down first uh, and then red on top of it. And you can tell I was way off center on this, but it's really kind of fun uh, sunrise here. So you, you, know, you can see the red in here. It, it burned down through the black into the white of the tile and it left some of that black for the clouding and, and stuff like that. The reflection looks really nice. It's supposed to be over a lake or something. And uh, I think it came out not bad. Again, I did not clear coat these, so they're not gonna be as shiny as they normally would be, but I just wanted to show you how they came straight off of the laser. The next thing I did was the Nicky Norton test. I had to crank down my ISO here to, to even show you this because it's white, but this is the next thing I did. Now this is a Nicky Norton test. I'll put the links in the description for the test that I do. This is the Norton method tile test pattern, 100% max. So it starts with uh, percentages 10 all the way up to 100 and 250 up to 3000. Now I did not modify this for the Laser Master 2 Pro because we're supposed to be going up to 10,000. So I need to do that on this one, but I had this file and I wanted to run it. So this will tell you where you should be in the white tile method. Once I got done with that, I ran this one right here. And this is just a nice scene with some elephants. This is the Nicky Norton white tile method. It is not bad. I could do a little bit better, I believe. Actually, I'm gonna dial these settings in better so you're gonna get some more definition in the blacks and stuff. But I really love the details, the clouds, the grass, everything you can see in this. And this is just the you know, settings I ran right from that test tile. Uh, so I definitely can dial this in better and I definitely will do that. But it wasn't too bad. I just wanted to show you some tests that I did do with the laser. I'm gonna do some bigger things like canvas and things like that. Uh, I will pop those on my social media, so stay tuned. But overall, I really like this laser. So there you have it. All of those specs combined, the safety features, the new updated parts, everything combined is why I changed my mind. And this, in my opinion, is the new best desktop diode laser you can buy. I highly suggest you check one out. They're pretty awesome. They're always upgrading the firmwares as they move forward. I've done a couple firmware upgrades since I got this beta machine, but I tell you what, uh, it is definitely worth it. Now this machine was sent to me free from X banks. You can find a link in the description below. I really appreciate that. I have been testing it for quite a while, a couple months now, and uh, I really think this is the way to go if you're looking for a desktop diode laser that can do just a ton of stuff. Well, I hope you guys learned something today, and as always, keep burning. Hey everybody, give me that thumbs up if you liked the video. If you haven't already yet, please hit that subscribe button right in the center, and as always, click the little bell right over here if you wanna get notified anytime we go live, or put out another great video right here on the Edge of Tech.